Moral hazard exists in principal-agency relationships where the agent doesn't bear all the liability or the risk of their own misbehavior. So if you think about most corruption cases now are, are detected as a result of third-party misbehavior. Third parties in foreign countries who bribe uh, government officials realize that the biggest risk of enforcement lies with the principal, the parent company, not the agent. So agents, which are the source of the problem, can be extreme risk takers. I think that um, a lot of companies are grappling with this with this right now, and and with increased enforcement actions, they're realizing that you know they don't control the third party agents, but yet they need to have more control over them. So there's a number of steps that you know companies can take, and you know the first is obviously doing a robust due diligence, you know, on the people who act as your agents and 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 third parties that you do business with, if one of your third-party agents does engage in, in reckless or illicit behavior, um, that you're going to make sure everybody knows about it, that you have you know, communication both internally and externally, and, and so that you're going to shame them. I mean, the enforcement agencies may be coming after you for their behavior, but you're going to make sure that people know that it was because of, of their behavior. I think if you're a larger company, something else that can be done, this would be a little bit harder with smaller companies, is that you can if you're a larger company that's operating globally, is invest in some software so that you can track, you know, the third parties that you do, um, you know, business with these agents, and make sure that um, the due diligence that you've done is is in that database, so that when your employees in other parts of the world who are looking to do to utilize those those agents, that they have the benefit from the work that you've already done and the ongoing monitoring and that it's, it's, it's in that database. So many companies um, that invest and do the due diligence don't share it with the rest of the company because they're doing it for a specific deal in a specific country. And you know, with the technology that we have today, they could very easily share that. Might be a little bit harder if you're a smaller private company, but it can still be done. The days of, of, of being the ostrich um, from a board member standpoint are, are, are over. And board members really need to ask very probing questions. You can't just take the board book that you're given and say, okay, you need to have direct contact with um, those responsible, your chief compliance officer or whoever's responsible for that function, and ask them questions. And there are so many different risks that corporations are dealing with, third-party risk here to date has not been at the top of their list to ask you know, questions about, but they need to ask those questions and they need to probe beyond the information they're given. And on the management side, you know, if your compliance officer doesn't have a direct line into that board or a line through the general counsel, that's, that's problematic. The biggest risk, obviously, in the context of global corruption is if you're going to spend money anywhere or look at any particular risk, it's in the behavior of your third parties or your counterparties, your joint venture. You want to ensure that that, if there is misbehavior, it's not imputed to you. Imagine this, there's a, there's a third party uh, act that's uh, potentially illegal. The regulators come in and they say, show me your due diligence file. Show me the diligence that you did and the oversight that you maintained over that third party. The C-suite executive can't show it, and if the board member can't ensure that it was done, then the, the re you've handed a regulator the argument that you recklessly disregarded the risk, that you buried your head in the sand, that you became an ostrich. So, it's, so it's, they're, they're, the regulators are going to be looking for ostriches, right? And when they find them and they find no due diligence, then they, then they have that kind of evidence that tends to point to reckless or willful disregard of risks. That's even more so if the area that you, this agent is operating in is a high risk area. If I was a board member, what would keep me up at night would be, are, are we sure we have good due diligence on our third parties? Who's got them? Where are they? How are we updating? And how are we ensuring that we're doing it in an ongoing fashion? Those are the things I would be asking as a board member. As a C-suite executive, I'd say, show it to me. I want to see it and I want to have comfort in it and I want someone else to take a look at to make sure that, that it's being done in accordance with industry standards.